Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1166. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about the Fed backstopping the banks because Contagion was just about to start happening. And after our podcast Friday, where I talked about Silicon Valley Bank and some of the issues that it has had in the last year since the Fed started dramatically raising interest rates and how they had been looking to be in trouble and were trying to shore themselves up by selling stock, that proved not successful. And the bank basically over the weekend was taken over by the Federal Reserve. That was the second bank for that to happen to after Silvergate. Now we've also had Signature Bank be in trouble and a few other banks mentioned. So now that the Fed has stepped in to basically make the depositors whole, that reduces the threat of contagion. Now a lot of people feel like this is a bank bailout, but it's not. It's making the depositors whole, the people that had their funds in the bank, but it's not making the executives or the shareholders of the stock of the bank whole. And that's an important distinction because depositors should be made whole. They're not only our tech upstarts and tech companies, but also wine farmers at Silicon Valley Bank. And should Silicon Valley Bank completely shut down, there would literally be 65,000 employees vulnerable to not receive payroll. So it could easily kill the United States tech sector, which would be an issue of national security, if you really think about it, decimating our tech sector and allowing China to take the lead role there would be devastating. So there's all kinds of angles to look at for this. But the good news is there's no money that's going to come out of taxpayer wallets for this. Now, let's review a little bit as to why this happened, because I think there's also misunderstandings about how and why this is happening. A lot of the responsibility for this lays squarely on the shoulders of the Federal Reserve for raising interest rates so much and so fast. You see, what happened to Silicon Valley Bank was they got a lot of venture capital money back in 2020 and 2021 that came into the bank and it had to be invested. Those funds were used to purchase different types of bonds, mortgage-backed securities, treasury bonds, etc. When interest rates rise, the value of bonds drops. So as the Fed raised interest rates so quickly, the value of those bonds dropped and banks have to do what's called mark to market. That means even though you hold a bond that's going to be worth its face amount at maturity, maybe in six months or a year or two years, you have to mark it down to the value that it is today. And if interest rates go up and the value of your bonds drop, you have to mark your portfolio down to the value of what the bonds are worth today. Even though they're gonna be redeemable dollar for dollar, when they mature, if they're worth less than that today, you have to mark that down and that impacts your assets and liabilities. So this has impacted multiple banks. Even the large banks have been impacted by this. Now, not all of them are upside down, but all of them are fractional reserve banks, which means they don't keep dollar for dollar on hand for depositors. So when certain people started telling their friends to pull money out of Silicon Valley Bank, it caused a run on the bank. If they did the same thing at a larger bank, the same thing would happen because banks just don't keep that much on hand. I believe it's about 6% that they keep on hand of total deposits. So every bank is going to have trouble if they get a run on the bank. And that's why the Fed had to step in and say that they will shore up all the depositors of the bank and make them whole and make sure that they get all of their funds. Now they might only get 
access to some of their funds today, but because those bonds are going to mature at face value and all you have to do is wait it out and those bonds will mature, there's nothing that the Fed needs to pay or spend here to solve the problem. All they need to do is provide time for this to work its way through. So I think it was the right thing that the Fed did. They needed to get in and tell the depositors they were safe and stop the run on the banks and stop the contagion that was happening to spill over to other banks. Now we saw massive fear come into the market and people were talking about a stock market crash, a depression, all of this. But the futures Sunday night were up for the stock market. So Monday morning, I wasn't surprised when the stock market opened up. That's because interest rates dramatically dropped as people anticipated that the Fed is not going to be able to raise interest rates in the future. That interest rate rises are going to be done because of this issue with the bond market, with lack of liquidity, with causing contagion in banks. They would be ridiculously irresponsible if they continue to raise interest rates in the face of what's happening right now. That's not to say they can't do it. They can. But if they did, I think it would be a terrible mistake. And the markets are saying that too. And that's why interest rates sold off and declined, which caused the stock market to rally. It also caused mining stocks to rally. So silver was up over 6% today and the mining stocks were up over 6%. So as interest rates decline, people are more willing to jump into gold and silver. Also, the fear of quantitative easing gets put on the table because if we had massive bank breakdowns, the Fed would have to print money again and do quantitative easing, which would increase the deficit, which would damage the dollar, which would raise the value of precious metals. So that's one reason why we've been invested in precious metals and mining stocks is in case something like this happened, we can benefit. The other thing that's been benefiting is cryptocurrency as people flee the banking system and go into cryptocurrencies. Now that's not untreacherous because we have some issues there. We have USDC coin, which had funds at Silicon Valley Bank. And so they have broken the peg with the dollar. So they actually have a value of under $1 on the USDC. It actually traded as low as 87 cents at one point and then rebounded back. Then there was the scare with Ripple saying that it had some funds at Silicon Valley Bank. But CEO Brad Garlinghouse came out and said, yeah, we had some funds there, but it's not a big deal. And we have funds at other banks too. And now everything is fine because the Fed is backstopping the bank and helping depositors. So that was a non-issue. But again, a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt was spread during a few hours where people didn't know what was going on. So right now, what the Fed needs to do is keep everyone calm, get everyone on the same page, try to stop the contagion, keep more banks from failing, and help depositors feel secure. What you can do personally to help your finances is have extra cash on hand, have extra food and water on hand, any medications that you take, and having mining stocks, silver, cryptocurrencies in your portfolio, I think are a really good idea right now. We need to stay nimble and we need to have multiple avenues to access funds and to move money around because things are just very strange right now. And we're seeing this lack of liquidity. So the more liquidity that you can keep on hand, the more that you can have access to, the more that you have different sources of funds and ways to access funds, I think is a smart strategy right now. So precious metals, different cryptocurrencies are ISO 2022 cryptocurrencies, of course, because I believe they are the new banking system. And to get to the new system, we have to have a breakdown. We have to have some sort of problem reaction solution scenario to get us to the new financial system. So we're right in the process of that, I believe. And this is part of what we're seeing right now is a breakdown of the old system. That has to happen for us to get to the new system. And March 20th being right around the corner when we have the migration of a lot of funds, I don't think is a coincidence. So stay diversified, keep some extra liquidity, keep a level head, and Stay clear of the fear, uncertainty, and doubt because where we're going is to a new financial system, a reboot of the system, if you will, 
And that's what we really need to do to be able to move forward. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And all my podcasts are in my wealth mentoring library on my website at lindapjones.com. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.